In this video, I'm gonna go over a five-step action plan that you can utilize to jumpstart your real estate investing career in the next 30 days. And yes, that's a band-aid on my thumb. I cut it with my razor. For those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Sam Prim and I'm the owner of Faster Freedom. I also own a rental portfolio worth $34 million of single family houses, apartment complexes, and storage facilities that I bought without using any of my own money. We do wholesales and fix and flip. I do a lot of real estate investing. That's why I'm creating videos to show you how to do what I did, double down on what I did well, and learn from my mistakes. Make sure to stay tuned to the end to hear Maisie's joke of the day. It's a horrible corny dad joke, but it's worth the wait. All right, let's jump in. Number one, you need to attend two local real estate investing meetups. Real estate investing meetups are where it all starts. It's where real estate investors meet, landlords meet, flippers meet, wholesalers meet there, insurance agents meet there, private money lenders meet there, hard, you get the gist of it. Everybody that is locally involved in the real estate investing game go to local meetups because they're getting out of their car, they're driving, they're putting themselves out there and they're meeting other people. They're not just sitting behind a keyboard. So these are people that are active. They're people that you wanna get to know. Your life can be changed by going to your local meetup and just making one connection that can connect you and connect you. And you can really, really up your Rolodex as far as real estate investing goes with just going to one meetup. So if you're in a decent sized market, there's going to be multiple ones a month. You will make more connections and you will make connections that will last for years. If you're in St. Louis, come to Faster House Buyers Club. We have 200 to 250 people that show up every single month. We have a guest speaker, we pay for dinner, there's a cash bar that makes it kind of fun. Everybody networks, deals get bought there, deals get sold there. People connect and it's like-minded investors meeting together to try and help each other out. And that's what most local meetups are. So join your local meetups, go to two of them in the next 30 days. Number two, call 15 bandit signs. What are bandit signs? Bandit signs are those little two foot by three foot signs you see on the side of the roads and at intersections. There are political signs and then there's also the we buy houses signs. You'll see people writing we buy houses or we buy your mom's house, whatever it is, in Sharpie marker or they sometimes they have them printed out. But those are people that are actively looking to buy deals. Call that sign. Introduce yourself. It's probably a wholesaler that's looking to get properties under contract. They're looking for homeowners to call that sign to buy their house, but you can kind of circumvent the system and call that wholesaler directly and just ask to meet them for coffee or lunch or just worst case scenario, introduce yourself and tell them what you're looking to buy and have them text or call you with their deals. Just start to do that and you got to do 15 of them. That sounds like a lot, but you'll probably make at least two or three connections with a really, really good wholesaler that will bring you deals in the future. So go out, drive around, take actions, snap some pictures. Number three, visit three small local banks. I'm going to talk about what small local banks are, why you should visit them, and what you should say when you visit them. The first part, what are small local banks? Small local banks are your banks, your community banks. They're like First State Bank of St. Charles is one I use, American Bank of Missouri. They're those small banks that have five or 10 branches. They're in big cities, but they're usually kind of on the outskirts. They sometimes have branches inside big cities, but they're not your Bank of America, they're not your commerce banks, they're not your big banks. They're the banks that you're gonna work with if you wanna own rental properties or if you want to finance a flip through a bank, they're the banks that will do that. These big national institutional banks, they don't want anything to do with real estate investing. But these small local community banks, that's all they do, or that's mostly what they do to stay in business and to be profitable, is to invest with experienced and brand new real estate investors. If you have your stuff together, which we'll talk a little bit about, go meet these people and it will change your life. The small local banks I work with have completely changed my rental portfolio. I would not be where I was if I had not started to make connections with these small local banks. They will do things that big banks cannot do because they have their own set of rules to put it lightly. Call ahead, email, or just walk in the lobby and ask if you could talk to the commercial lending department. Say you're a real estate investor and you want to talk to the lender that deals with real estate investing type deals. It's usually like a senior vice president of commercial lending or branch manager of commercial lending. Quick pro tip, you can ask at your local meetups what small local banks other investors use and they'll probably give you their contact at the bank. That can kind of give you a head start on who to talk to, but if you don't do that, still go to these small local banks. This whole thing is predicated on the fact that you're gonna get off your butt and go do things. You're not just gonna sit behind your phone or sit behind your computer and analyze deals that you may or may 
not buy. Number four, this is a little bit more of a sitting behind a keyboard one, but join all your local real estate investing Facebook groups. The Facebook icon with a little like three heads on it is the group icon. So go join all your local investing groups. Just type in real estate investing groups, or real estate investing groups near me, or if you're in Nashville, real estate investing groups, Nashville, real estate investing groups, Kansas City, wherever you are, type that into Facebook. Facebook knows where you are, but they will link you up with those. Like I said, there's probably 10 of them in St. Louis and we're a mid to small market. So small markets have them, medium sized markets have them, and big markets have them. It's just kind of a numbers game. I would assume, I don't know for sure, Chicago's probably got 15 or 20 of them. I know there's a ton out in California. So there are a lot of these small local real estate investing Facebook groups. They'll have anywhere from probably two 2,000 to 20,000 members. There's a little bit of funny business going on in those groups. However, all the good investors still hang out in those groups. I know a ton of really good wholesalers and landlords and agents in St. Louis that do post their deals on those groups because they're looking to make new connections. They don't just wanna have one or two buyers, they wanna have 10 good buyers, and that's a place to find deals. Now, they're not all good deals to get sent on those, so be careful, make sure to do your own homework, but people are gonna post, I'm looking for a plumber, or hey, I'm a plumber, I'm looking to work with real estate investors, or hey, here's a deal, tax me for details. Those kind of things are gonna go on in those groups. It's a pretty big lift to figure out who the good wholesalers are and who the bad ones are, who the people that are trying to kind of scam you and who the people that aren't. Regardless, immerse yourself in those groups in the next 30 days. Join all of them. You don't have to continue to be in all of them, but join all of them. And then maybe at the end of the month, just narrow it down to your top five. Number five is start an LLC. You probably technically don't need one if this is your first 30 days investing in real estate. There's a couple of reasons why I think you should start one. Number one, it's a mindset thing. If you start an LLC, you own a business. You can create a logo, you can open up a bank account, you can buy business cards, and you can say, you own an LLC. While it probably won't own any real estate right away, you still will be in the mindset of, I own a business, let's move this business forward, as opposed to looking at it as a side hustle or something that you don't focus your time on. If you go out there and start that LLC, who cares what the name is, you can have fun with it. Just doing that, I think, will get you further along. You need to keep a separate business bank account and a personal bank account. You need to track those expenses separately. So technically, it's good to have for that and your accountant or CPA or bookkeeper will thank you because you'll be keeping those things separate. And also, of course, the main reason why people think about it, you're protecting yourself legally. You have a legal barrier between your personal assets and your business assets, which is that LLC. There's S corps, there's C corps, there's partnerships. I don't want to go into all of that. There's different reasons why you should have those. I would talk to somebody or a local, um, you know, real estate lawyer or CPA or somebody that has a little more background on what you're trying to do, but just getting one is huge. And there's a ton of different ways to do it. You can go to LegalZoom. That's what Lucas and I did. We actually started WAP properties. It stands for walls and prim, not what you think. Started that in a bar before a softball game, a couple drinks deep on legal zoom. And it wasn't perfect, but it was actually good enough. We took it to a lawyer a few years later, once it owned a few million dollars in real estate, and they just made a few minor tweaks. So it did protect us decently. You can do a lot of different things online. So you have your online option that's super cheap. Legal zoom, that's probably two to 400 bucks, depending on your state and what you're doing. Or you can go meet a lawyer, probably a thousand to 2000 bucks. So it does cost a little bit of money, but I think it's extremely important to get the ball rolling on that. I actually have a bonus tip for you. So this is number 5A or number six, whatever, it's a bonus tip. If you want to get the ball rolling in these next 30 days, go to my free training. The link is below in the description, but it's www.freerentalwebinar.com. And it's a free training, 25 minute training, no strings attached. I talk about how I was able to buy millions of dollars worth of real estate without using any of my own money. Thanks to that guy, Steve, over there in the corner who's watching me record this video. Steve, you know Steve. So go there, check that out. Do those first five steps and check out that free training on the Maisie Joke of the Day. What has more letters than the alphabet? The post office. Really bad corny dad jokes. <laughs> Over here is a real life case study of one of my latest rental properties I bought. There's before pictures and after pictures. I walk through the rehab and show you what I bought it for, what we put in it, what it ended up appraising for, how much cash flow we have. I peel back the curtains and show you every single step of the way so you can see a real life example of how you can buy rental properties without using any of your own money. Check it out. See you on the next one.